Hi there. Good morning. It's Stevina House, and I am here in my Girls Gone Feywild t-shirt, and we're in my kitchen, which we were in before when we did the egg dyeing class, but this time you get the full panorama, and uh, I'm going to be making my Saturday morning tradition, which is Hala French toast done as a smoked turkey or chicken sausage Monte Cristo like thing. I've had some friends over, they really like it. My guy, he loves it. Uh, and it's a way to bring a little bit more protein and substance to French toast, which yes, it has eggs and milk, but it's mostly just a slice of bread. So um, I don't have my hairbrush or makeup on or my kitchen clean. So something that I've noticed in some cooking shows is uh, they don't tell you actually how much it takes. So it is eight o'clock on the dot according to the microwave. Oh, just turned to 801. So I'm going to take time to brush my hair, clean up my kitchen, including some mopping on the floor, and then I'm gonna start cooking because that's never included in a recipe's time. There we go. Teeth brushed, hair brushed, I'm brushed. It's time that I uh, clean my kitchen so I can start cleaning. It's uh, cooking. I mean, clean my kitchen so I can start cooking. And it is 8.05. So years and years and years ago, my mom taught me every day, change your uh, hand towel in the kitchen just so that it's always clean. And I like to before I tossed in the laundry, kind of give my kitchen sink a good scrub down with it. She also told me, try to every day clean your kitchen sink. Even if you don't mop the floors, even if you don't clean all the countertops, get that kitchen sink clean, because then you at least have a starting point for someplace that's clean in your kitchen. So that's what I like to do. And it is 8.18, so five minutes, oh, 8.19, so about 15 minutes to clean your kitchen is a good starting point. Now, the farmer's market starts at nine o'clock. Do I have to be there right when they start? No, but the sooner I get to the market and get back, the sooner I can have breakfast. So, yeah, we're on a clock here. Here's the ingredients for French toast. I like using challah. I can pick up challah at my local bakery every Friday for Shabbat. And uh, anything we have left over, this is one that hangs out usually in my freezer as a backup. But what I'll do is I'll slice it, oh, three quarters to an inch thick, and then I'll put it in a pan with two scrambled eggs and two cups of a kind of milk, scrambled and then just poured over the top. No sugar yet. Uh, this won't get sugar until later in a special way. So we're going to cook up the French toast the way that my guy likes it. He likes it more um, custardy in the middle. So we're going to sear the outside and then put it into our oven. We're going to set it on warm so that it's just slightly warm. And then as I finish these up, I'm going to pop them into the oven to keep them warm. Then I'm going to pull them out again and then we're going to top them. I don't have my usual smoked turkey, so today we're going to do some cooked chicken apple sausage. So there's a little bit of sweetness there. We're going to put it on a sprinkle of my spice mix. This is actually a, a bunch of chai tea spices. It's got cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, mace, uh, nutmeg, uh, basically any ground spice that would go into chai or apple pie or pumpkin pie. Yeah, this is my everything spice. Um, add a little bit of sugars in there too. So I'm gonna cook those all up, top it with those. But one of the first things I'm gonna make is Swedish cream. About equal parts of whipping cream and sour cream. Now, some people make it more like a custard and they will put gelatin in it. I don't bother anymore. Um, because I just find that whipping the whipping cream and then slowly putting in the sour cream, kind of folding it in so that it stays fluffy, actually 
maintains its structure just fine and is a nice topping for stuff. I also have some store-bought strawberries, but I'm hoping at nine o'clock I'll get to run out to do the uh, farmer's market. Maybe I'll find something even better. So first thing I'm going to do is make the sweet cream. I'm also going to sweeten it with a little bit of sugar or sugar substitute. Um, if you like Splenda or Monk's fruit or uh, uh, Stevia or any of those, those work just fine. This is actually Monk's fruit. It's not actually sugar. So that's what I'm going to sweeten this with. So let's get to making that. Okay, Swedish cream time. I don't even measure. I know I'm terrible, but because it's about equal parts, if I've got a small container of cream, it's just one container of that, whip it up with the sweetener and then add in your sour cream. This is a little bit taller, so I'm just gonna be estimating about half of it. Does it have to be the heavy whipping cream? No, you could use the lighter whipping cream if you want to. This is the classic 36%. It just has to be a whipping cream. Can you do this with like one of those freezer or refrigerator pots of a Cool Whip? Maybe, but I don't like the flavor of those. I like the real cream. Okay, I don't know what that was. This is a baby spoon, but I use it for adding sweetener to my tea. And I just spread a whole bunch of it around. Thank you, Monk's fruit. So uh, I'll clean that up later, but now we need to whip our cream. Now, if I was using a liquid, it would be a little bit easier to incorporate the sweetener into the cream uh, and I might even do it at the end but because this monk's fruit is in crystalline form more like sugar I'm putting it in with the liquid cream to sort of um, melt it a little bit disperse it through the liquid and get it well in there so let's just let that roll and I am going to get to cooking the French toast so I've got my pan, I've got value-sized coconut oil. Now, if you are a non-stick pan person, awesome. Yes, I just ate a little blob of coconut oil because it is delicious. So I'm going to warm that up. I've got it on about medium-high. I'm just going to watch that coconut oil to melt. So I'm using a solid steel pan. I'm not using my cast iron, though I could. Uh, and I do have some uh, stainless steel and some uh, non-stick pans, but this is just the skillet that I like to use. It's a nice sort of griddle flat so that it gets a nice, uh, what's it called? It's not caramelization if there's no sugar, it's Molliard effect if it's meat. I don't know, maybe it is caramelization, but it'll get a nice browning crispness to it in this pan that I don't usually get in my nonstick pans. Oh, there goes the oil. I'm gonna push that around with the back of my spoon. been soaking overnight in the egg and milk mixture so it's very absorbed in very custardy. I could get about two slices. Okay now here's where all the noise in my microphone happens. I've got my blender going and now I'm going to hit my fan on low. Additionally every time you hear a weird clanking sound that's the vent chat between my vent and my roof getting blown by the wonderful eastern Washington winds and uh, causing it to make a flapping sound. Now, I see a couple dry spots on some of this toast and I've got a little bit of liquid in the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of mop that up a bit. You're good. You're good. It's the only rice 
spot is actually on one of the pieces I have in there. So this is why you wash your hands before you start cooking, because you get your hands all up into your cooking. Why am I not wearing an apron? Why? Why did I do this to myself? I'm in the middle of doing something super messy and I'm not wearing an apron. Hang on a second. Check this out. Rose mauling. Scandinavian pride. Okay. So that's only been on there for a few seconds. Got my nice flat spatula. Give it a flip. A little bit of golden brown. Both pieces. Okay. Put that on my spoon rest. Check my cream. Okay, I'm gonna up the speed on my cream. Let's put my one screw away. Now sometimes I remember to put my uh, spice mix on it while it's still wet. I think I forgot, so. I'll just put it here on the back side. There we go. Now these guys, I'll remember why it's still wet. Why put it on when it's wet? I think some people like the toasted spice smell and flavor and stuff. Uh, as long as you're not burning things. Speaking of burning things, <laughs> not burnt yet. Okay, it's still a little bit too wet at the edges. I know, it's smoking like heck, but it's not burnt yet, so I think I'm still doing it right. my new hand towel. Ooh, okay. This is the texture of my whipping cream. It is... very soft so I'm going to whip it a little bit longer and then I can scoop in my sour cream why am I doing this all as one continuous shot I'll just cut it apart later I guess stage yet, but it's nice and fluffy and stiff now. So now I'm going to put in my sour cream. Carefully fold in the sour cream to make sure that I wasn't losing any fluff in that whipped cream. But I think that's more of a problem with egg whites that you whip than it is with cream. So uh, 
Full speed ahead. Done. Now sometimes, sometimes I'll add that chai spice mix to my, uh, my Swedish cream, particularly if I'm putting on top of pumpkin pie. Mmm. Yeah, it's good. After you lick your fingers, wash your hands. Okay. <clears throat> hands washed. Mmm. Good. Now, I'm just putting them straight onto the rack so they don't get soggy on the bottom. I usually do one side of the toast a little bit more well done than the other side. A little bit. And this is my last slice. So Holla is such a big, fluffy style of loaf that just a few slices is good enough for the two of us. Now the tray that I have these soaking on overnight, I just washed. Oop. It's a little bit damp, so I'm going to toss it into the oven right there. Gonna do a little bit of cleanup. finished in the oven. So let's come over here. Most done side goes down. How did I have these ranged? I, I, I'm usually really good at puzzles. I have no idea how this all went together originally. So I'm squishing my French toast. Eh, it happens. Okay. So now, if I hadn't put on the spice while they were cooking, I'd put that on. And then I use provolone and smoked turkey. Now, if I had smoked turkey already, just sliced, I'd put slices of that on. Didn't happen to have any on hand. So this is chicken apple sausage that I had pre-cooked. Not much for pork in this household. And then each of these slices gets one slice of provolone. Some people are like, well, what about the berry jam that you're supposed to put on to a Monte Cristo? Oh, remember those strawberries? Or, you know, if when I go to the farmer's market, there's some fresh raspberries or blackberries or something like that. Yeah, I'll get some. Uh-oh. I'm short on sausage. Um, let's steal one piece from you. And then a piece from you and spread those out and a piece from you so one two three four one two three four one two three four okay <laughs> so there's only four slices of sausage usually I cover it all with meat but that's not happening this time and I miscounted on my slices of cheese. So this one's just going straight into my mouth because um, I just put my fingers all over it. This is going into the garbage. And these guys, I'm now turning my oven up. Keeping on bake, turning that burner off. Oven temperature to about 250. 
because I just want to melt this cheese. I don't want to bake this whole thing and turn the cheese crispy. I just want it to be softly melted. So this now pops in the oven. I enjoy a little snack. And I put the Swedish cream into a container, pop it in the refrigerator. Look at that. This is sweet, but it's also tangy because of the sour cream. Nice and fluffy, but it holds up to being put on top of warm stuff more than whipped cream. Whipped cream will just kind of melt. And a batch like this usually will last about a week because we put it on everything. Well, not everything, but uh, just on top of some berries with some cookies uh, on top of pie, uh, even something more savory like this Monte Cristo sandwich. It's just a nice topping to put on top. So this is going into the fridge. This I'm gonna serve with breakfast in a pretty little bowl. There we go. And I'm probably just gonna serve it with this spatula because why not? It's my house. Okay, time now is 8.48. So, I've got 10 minutes to clean up all this stuff, set the table, and then I can head out to the farmer's market. Now, if you have your oven set low enough, you can actually just kind of keep it in a holding pattern where that cheese will just slowly ooze and melt. If you crank it up too high, you're ending up crisping that cheese and you end up with hard crust and that's not what I want. So I'm going to clean up, go to farmer's market, and come back. Okay, stuff is clean and put away. Got my sweater on. It is 8.53. Farmer's market opens in seven minutes. And I bike there, but it's just down the hill. I can usually get there in less than 10 minutes. So I'm going to put on my bike helmet, hop on my bike, make sure that I have my pannier bags with me and my wallet with some cash, and uh, do the farmer's market. Now, my guy is home. If a smoke alarm goes off, he's going to hear it. But that shouldn't happen because I've got my oven at such a low temperature, I'm actually going to turn it down even and just keep it at the warm setting, which is about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And that will just kind of sit there, staying just warm enough that nothing's going to go bad. It's just going to hang out. Now, if I can't find any delicious fruit, we do have the strawberries that I bought at the store's backup, but I'm really hoping we have something nice. So it is much later. We ended up having the French toast before I went to the farmer's market, but at the farmer's market, I did find morels. We've got somebody who does wild foraging of morels. Morels cannot be cultivated uh, in even small scale farms because they need a combination of altitude, snow melt, and wildfires in order to do their thing. And those three things are really hard to do in a controlled farm environment. But the plan is with the leftover French toast, tonight I'm going to slice up some morels. I'm going to saute them, put them on top of that French toast, and that's going to be dinner, and it's going to be amazing. And this is what happens when you don't make sure that you've got plenty of room on your SD card, I ran out of space. So luckily I caught it before I cooked dinner. So I just decided to videotape the cooking of the morels. I cleaned and then cut my morels, the stems that I cut fine and the uh, bulbs of them, I just sliced uh, kind of long so that they would maintain their structure a bit. And my neighbor gave me one of their fresh grown onions that I decided to cut up and add to that as a topping. You can see the pan in the background. I've got a little pat of butter starting to warm up over there. 
and I'm going to just saute the mushrooms with the onion in the pan to get them all just nice and, you know, a little bit translucent with that butter. And then that's going to go on top of the Monte Cristo sandwich. So they're an open face. I've got some pictures of what the breakfast looks like, but this is the more savory version. And that's the nice thing about this. If you don't put a lot of sugar into your French toast batter with the egg and the milk that you pour over the top of it, if you just keep it to spices and then leave your sugar to any jam or syrup or a whip topping that you put on the top, you can easily make it into a savory dish later for leftovers. Um, I really found this super, super enjoyable, both as a breakfast and as a savory dish later on for dinner. I have to say that I've done some experimenting. Pumpkin pecan pie spread into the French toast is very delicious. I've done a stuffing where I stuffed a pie filling into the French toast, and that worked out well. I like uh, smoked turkey drumstick because it's the darker meat and it's more of a similar flavor to ham. Ham would be the traditional Monte Cristo. The traditional Monte Cristo is, I believe it's the French toast with blackberry or lingonberry jam, ham, Swiss, I think, and then a dusting of powdered sugar. I like cutting down on the sugar so that I can reuse it later as a savory dish. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's my first cooking video on YouTube and I'm still getting the kinks out so we didn't actually get to see me do anything but occasionally take a little sample off of the ingredients and not actually anyway eating the food. Please continue to watch my channel for interesting things that I do around my house because it's all fun. Get out there, try new things, be safe, and have fun.